Hello and welcome to the first episode of the new batch of the Belzona podcast, your go-to podcast for all things engineering and coatings. I am Richard Bywater uh, and I'm very happy to be back hosting, like I said, the uh, the first episode of the latest batch of the Belzona podcast. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time in Belzona as we're continuing to grow and develop to meet the ever-changing environments of tomorrow. So the company has always been consistent in creating and improving products, uh, investing in new equipment, and most importantly, uh, looking after our people, which uh, will form the, the basis of today's first episode. But before we get onto that, I just want to explain a, a new feature that we have uh, in the latest batch of episodes. So um, we have set up a uh, specific email address um, related to the podcast. So the idea is here, we want to get a bit more interactive with you guys, the listeners. We want to hear if you have any uh, questions on any of the, the content that we're putting out, any feedback, obviously we'd love to hear, but also if you guys have any suggestions in terms of topics that you'd like us to cover on future episodes. So if you do want to reach out, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that now on our latest or our new email address, which is podcast at bellzona.com. Right, so uh, today's episode. Um, I know in previous podcast episodes, we have tended more to focus on products or even a particular industry or industry area. But today we want to focus more, like I said before, on the people and the people behind the Belzona brand. Uh, employees have been one of Belzona's biggest assets over the years. So when Jorgen Svensson established the business back in 1952, he introduced the company philosophy as being one of the integral parts. Uh, and one of those integral parts was, of course, the staff. So we, as a company, or Belzona as a company, have always gone above and beyond for its employees because without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. So for this episode, we are going to talk to uh, two guests, each one with, uh, well, both from a, a different department and different levels of experience uh, to talk about their time at Belzona and get some insights into what they do and, uh, and their experience of, of working here. Uh, and to start us off is our first guest, Jevon Pugh. So welcome, Jevon. Thank you, Richard. How are you, genuinely? How are you, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, do, doing good, I think. Yeah, happy, excited to be uh, part of, of what is the first episode of probably the, the second batch of the Belzona podcast. Yes, it's, it's, it's a new thing for me, obviously, being sat in front of a, a, a big furry microphone, uh, yeah. as we are. Um, but yeah, if you just want me to, to, to talk, I, I can do that because I'm, yeah, that's something that I'm fairly comfortable with. Excellent. Um, and what do you think, actually, of our, our new podcast room? Um, it, you talk about very much. We've we've got a pretty professional setup here, now, haven't we? Yes, we have. Yeah, the microphones, the the comfy chairs, the uh, the very capable interviewer. Yeah, we've got everything we need. Very very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Just need a little like Starbucks or something in the corner now when we go. You know, full uh, full podcast. But um, excellent. Okay, so. Um, what, what do you think of the, the first load of, of episodes that, that we've done? Uh, are, you, are you a listener, I hope? Uh, yes, uh, and I'm, I can't say for certain that I've listened to all of them, but I've listened to most of them for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah um, interesting. Uh, I, I guess a number of the speakers, um, I was interested to hear what they had to say because they either report to me or they work <laughs> with me, so yeah. I was very interested to see, to see how, the, how they did. Uh, and, and I thought they they, uh, they did, a number of people did an, uh, yeah did a great job there. Really, yeah. really impressed with with how they came across and and their knowledge. You know, it's um, it's one way to to really find out what people know. Have them talk uh, in a microphone, and, and and you find out yeah these these are really knowledgeable people. So yeah, uh, yeah interesting. Do you know what? I, if I'm really honest, one of my favourite episodes from the the kind of uh, first batch. I've been, I've been directly told not to refer to it as a series or a season, so the editor's going mental now when I'm saying this. But it um, uh, was actually the, um, the the Science to Solution episode, which which was an interview with, obviously, your, your team member, uh, Jason, where he kind of went yep. through R&D um, and, and your main roles in the, in the business. I, personally, I thought that was really kind of gave us good insight into 
to a department that obviously I kind of work alongside with a, a little bit, but um, yeah. uh, you know that that's one of the episodes that we really really got some really good feedback on. So um, yeah, I think I think a lot of people are interested in R and D. I think it's a little bit of a of a secretive department, if you like, because yeah. um, you know we we don't want to tell people that that. That products are, are ready until they're ready, basically, yeah. because you you can disappoint people. So quite often, there's there's a bit of a shroud of secrecy over there, um, and, and and I'm sure people want to yeah peer behind that curtain and, and understand better uh, the processes and and the journey that that a product goes on from initial idea to actual physical end product. So there's, yeah, there's, there's 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 stuff that's of interest to a lot of people in in that yeah. kind of conversation. Absolutely. So, um, something that we're we're doing a kind of new feature, if you like, um, for for this episode, the first time we're going to try it in episode is, is when we do get a guest on um, to kind of kick us off, kind of um, not break the ice, but in some ways break the ice. Mm. Um, we've just asked, you know, for for you to give us a bit of a random fact about yourself. Yes, I was asked so, for a random fact. I gave a random fact. It was fairly random. Excellent. And again, I know nothing about this. Um, so, oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, it's completely new to me. So, what, Devin, what's, what's your what, what was my random fact? Yeah. Uh, my random fact was that I like to pick locks for relaxation. You like to pick locks for relaxation? Yeah. So, uh, you know, kind of picture the scene, sat on the sofa, <laughs> watching a bit of telly, padlock in one hand. Yeah. Um, Tools in the other hand. Wow. Can, can I open the padlock? Um, yeah, it's it's it, it, it's quite satisfying when you get a little click and the padlock. Pops yeah, open. I mean, there's so many places we can go with this, I suppose. Uh, so, is is it padlocks or are you are you some you know moonlighting as a <laughs> yeah <laughs> cracking no, no. cracking yeah. safes or yeah. no 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 there's there's no there's no um, illegality here. It's purely a kind of bit of a puzzle, yeah. but it's quite a tactile thing. So yeah, it, it's padlocks. So I've got a box full of padlocks of, of various wow. shapes and sizes. Incredible. <laughs> and, a, and a little a little set of tools. But yeah, it's it's you know it's quite cheap to get into. And in, and in fact, um, I've got an 11 year old daughter yeah. and I've, I've trained her. Uh, and and it, was, it was quite amusing when we visited the grandparents yeah. um, probably last year. Um, and the grandparents dug out a padlock and my 11 year old daughter popped it open within about a minute. And, and I think I think they, they were slightly freaked out because they, they realized that their security wasn't very good wow. if an 11 year old can open a padlock. But there you go. That's very, very interesting. Just, in fact, like, the last question, how do you even get into something like that? Because it, it's not some, you know, you don't get that on, on school. Internet, school. YouTube, yeah. did, you know, um, do, do a bit of Googling. There are lots of videos of, uh, of, of people who, who like to challenge themselves opening padlocks and, and you know, there's kind of introductory ones. You know, you, you right, spend 10 quid and get some tools yeah. delivered to your house and you can start popping padlocks. Excellent. Well, look, I know who to, to come to when uh, I lose the key for my, my bike in the uh, Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Desk, desk drawer I might be able to manage if, uh, <laughs> a, a pinch. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I could do uh, bikes... Um, uh, automotive, you know, yeah, yeah. there's a limit to, to yeah. my, my capabilities. One day. Yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> one day. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, well, I know we mentioned it before, Jevin, you, you've been with the business for, for around 25 years, um, first joining as a, a lab assistant, and then through your time, you've, you've worked your way up to become, um, your, I mean, your current role now, which is uh, your director of, of our research and development department here in, uh, mm. in the UK. So, Really like to hear a little bit about how your career has developed from kind of this this lab assistant all the way up to to kind of director level as as R and D director. Yeah, sure. So uh, just just correct you actually when when I joined Belzona, I joined okay. as a chemist. But but yes, I started in the in, in the chemical industry yeah. as a lab assistant. So that's absolutely correct. Yeah. So yeah, my 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 first rung on the ladder was as uh, a, you know a lab monkey do, <laughs> doing doing the. Uh, Doing the the messy stuff, doing the um, the unglamorous stuff yeah. uh, that needs to be done, um, and and that was at a business in in Manchester um, in, in kind of late eighties, I think. Yeah. I, I, I took that job. Um, so so that that's perhaps the first thing to to realise about me that I did start at the bottom um, and 
and I think that does give me the ability to to understand and empathise a little bit with um, with you know other members of staff who, who also start at the bottom and, and work their way up, um, because I've done those unglamorous roles. They need to be done. Yeah, someone's got to do them. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that that's formed part of my kind of character, if you like. Um, it's also worth saying that in, in my first job, which was pre Bell's owner, mm. uh, I had a really good boss, uh, and he was he had a great moustache. 70s style moustache excellent um and what what he instilled in me i think was um you know do do the best job you can and and do it right first time yeah and professional pride it was all of those sorts of things and at that stage my career i was quite impressionable and obviously and i was looking to learn so so i listened to to his words and and i think that stood me in good stead because i think you have to have professional pride in yourself and you have to know that you're doing the best job that you can because mm. if you don't think you're doing the best job you can the people around you probably aren't going to see that or think that either yeah. so I think I think I had a really good grounding with with that uh, early role uh, and with that particular uh, boss with the moustache <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil was his name <laughs> Phil with the moustache yeah excellent um, great so I mean so that was very much pre Belzona. Yes. Then you moved to Belzona, and that's right. And that's where your Belzona journey started. It, it did. That's right. So I, I joined as a as a chemist in the uh, in in the late nineties, um, crossing from Manchester, which is Lancashire, to Yorkshire. So there's, there was always a bit of a bit of a rivalry there, but uh, I, I was made very welcome, um, and and I was and I was offered the the job by uh, uh, my ex boss who, who I also used to work for in, in, in Manchester so I'm very grateful for him uh, because obviously I've been here 25 years as, yeah. uh, as, as you've, you've pointed out um, and I guess when I first first turned up in, in Harrogate my first visit to, to site to Harrogate uh, I, was, I was sold pretty much straight away because of the combination of um, uh, lovely facilities yeah. lovely setting ha- Harrogate uh, lovely location compared with with um, with Manchester, which is fairly industrial. So the industrial <laughs> at the part parts where where I yeah. where I um, worked. So there was a real a real positive sell there, um, and I was introduced to um, you know a number of people who were very welcoming, very helpful, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's worth name dropping a couple of people here. So um, Richard Collett, chief chemist. Yep. Uh, who who was here when I when I joined. Um, obviously very experienced, vastly knowledgeable. Mm. Um, and, the, and the other guy I'll mention is Jeff Binks, who, who, who is, who's retired now, um, but he is a, a Bellzona legend. And, uh, you know, er, early, early contact with, with Jeff, um, that, that was, that was you know, fantastic because of his huge knowledge and, yeah. and support. Uh, so so that, that was kind of chapter one, if you like, um, which was me as a chemist joining Belzona doing the product development stuff. Um, and then uh, in an, around 2008, I think it was, at that point I was uh, promoted to, to manager from chemist. Uh, and at that point, uh, the, the job changed. I was, I was less, less about uh, focusing on product development and more about focusing on managing the team to yeah. develop the products. So at that point, it's, it's more about um, building the team, developing the team, supporting the team. Uh, so that we can we can meet our objectives in terms of uh, in, in terms of those those products that we need to release uh, on a regular basis, mm. and of course that is the, that's the role that Jason uh, Jason Horn, who's done previous podcasts, is is now in. He stepped into into my shoes. Yeah, that's that's Jason, our R and D manager. That's right. That's yeah. right. So so yes, I, I handed over the baton to to Jason a couple of years ago in terms of uh, he now manages the team and looks after the team and and um, uh, defines. Uh, Strategy and which products we are we are looking to to work on. Yeah, I think it's also worth worth mentioning here the importance of um, the shareholders wanting, willing, and being able to invest in R and D. Hmm. And I think this is this is something that um, was another major sell for me when I joined the business um, uh, back in ninety six. Yeah. It was the fact that that R and D was held in high regard. Because it, it's it is that future vision of, of where the company wants to go, you know you, you can be selling great products right now, but if you're not looking to what products you need in ten years time, yeah. 
then then you can easily fall behind. Now, I, I think, well, in, in my time in, in Belzona, the shareholders have always been very interested in R&D and very willing to support R&D and invest in R&D. Yeah. And I think that makes, um, that well, that's always, that's made my life much easier um, in terms of my work at Belzona. I've not had to fight for those things. No. You know, it's been recognised that, yeah, we want to look to the future. R&D is important. Investment in R&D is important. So we've been able to get the resources we need to uh, to, to achieve our aims. Yeah. So you've had the, the support to uh, to kind of express yourself into the, the products that you you wanting to be developing. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure "express yourself" is perhaps <laughs> the, the right phrase because there's not a lot of room for for flair. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, the, the R and D chemist's job, the R and D manager's job, is to deliver what the business needs and yeah. what the commercial folk need. So, people like yourself, Richard, mm-hmm. you know, if if, um, if if the message from from the the customer facing people is we need this, then that is that is where R and D have to step in. Um, and it, and in many ways, it's it's not really about flair or artisticness. So, yeah. you know, it's about a plan. It's about a strategy. It's about how we can get from A to B. Um, and perhaps it's worth saying at that point. I think I think that is something that that I'm I'm I've been reasonably good at because I've got this kind of pragmatic approach yeah. to to R and D. Um, I would say I'm not I'm not a dreamer. I would say I'm a how can we get it done kind of yeah. person. Uh, and I think that just reflects the, the practicalities of the world and the realities that um, you know a business can't run solely on ideas. You've got to turn ideas into reality yeah. to make money off those ideas, uh, ultimately. So I think that probably comes from a little bit of my background in terms of starting from the bottom. Yeah. Um, and all, and also it's worth mentioning that um, my 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 education pathway was a little bit different. I did day release. I did degree via day release. And again, that's another example of where you're, you're mingling with people who are already in the commercial world. It's not just about education; it's about balancing work and education. Yeah. And I think that that gives well, that's given me a more practical, pragmatic outlook. Yeah. You know, we have to get from A to B, um, and, and it's, it's about getting there. It's a little bit like the England football team. You know, winning four <laughs> 0 is nice, but at the end of the day, winning one nil. <laughs> Is is what really matters. Yeah. It's the win that matters. It's not so much how you get there, uh, and I think that's that's um, yeah. It, it just illustrates the importance of pragmatism. I think, and that's that's kind of part of my mindset. Okay. So, uh, so any advice for for someone wanting to get into an R and D role? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the first thing to say is I, I think R and D is a great career for anyone. I, I, I'm I'm biased, of course, in that. But, but the reason I say that is I think what R&D gives you is variety. Yeah. And I think uh, I think a lot of people like variety in their work life. Um, not everyone wants to do the same thing day in, day out. Yeah. With R&D, it's different projects, different stages of projects, different products you're working on. So over the course of a few years, you can be working on many different things. Um, <clears throat> and, and I think that variety is, uh, is a really good thing. And, 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 and as we said earlier, lots of people are interested in R and D. It's a quite a quite a glamorous department in terms of the outside view of it. I'm not sure it's glamorous from the inside, yeah. but from the outside, it's a little bit glamorous. So, so I think it's a, it is a good career choice. Okay. In terms of getting into R and D, I think it depends on the level you want to you want to get into at. Yeah. If, if you if you're coming in at kind of a a more experienced level, you want to get in, into R and D at Belzona at a more experienced level, then it's all about polymer chemistry. Really, it's it's about having an understanding of polymers, um, and, and different types of polymers and and what they can bring to uh, uh, an end product to give the customer what they want. Mm. But if you're looking at an entry level position, which is um, you know where I started and where lots of people have started, then for me, it's all about um, being good raw material. Yeah. And what I mean by that is someone who is trainable, um, so has, has a really good ability to learn, but also someone who has a desire to grow and develop. And I'm sure you can say that about lots of roles. Um, but I think in, 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 in R&D, that, that, that's my experience, that those attributes are, are really critical. Um, and... Um, I'll, I'll give you a really good example, actually, okay. of of a person who who's who's joined at an entry level position and is and has and has worked their way up. 
uh, and that's uh, James Sykes, who's our production manager. Yeah. So, Jimmy, I don't think he likes to be called Jimmy, by the way. I think, I think he likes to be called James. Um, so, James joined the R&D department as an R&D assistant. Yeah. I can't remember when, but we're going back a bit. And in fact, I think I hired him. In fact, he might have even been my boy at the time. So, oh, okay. I perhaps have been a chemist. Um, so, James joined at, um, at an entry-level lab position. But from there, he has he's shown he is good raw material. He's, he's shown his desire to move on, to do more, to take on more responsibility. You know, I think that's a really big deal. A lot of people are happy to to just say, no, I'm, I'm comfortable where I am. I don't want any more. You know, James was different. J- James was always very willing um, uh, and I mean, extremely helpful. You know, that's that's another strong attribute of James. Yeah. So James went from from lab assistant to um, to the process side of the, of the company, um, looking looking at the QC side of our products, and ultimately he's ended up as production manager for a multi million pound um, international business. Yeah. So I think that that shows where perhaps a lab job, perhaps a, an R and D job, can ultimately take you yeah. if you've got the right attitude. Um, because I, and, and and Jason's another example. So Jason Jason Horn joined as. Um, assistant or technician, not sure which, but yeah. overall he's, he's joining at entry level. He's now R&D manager. And again, it's, it's a similar kind of story. He has the he has shown uh, he is the right material yeah. for learning, development, and taking on taking on more. Um, so so that, that would be perhaps my biggest piece of advice. If you if you're if you recognize those attributes in yourself mm. and you show willingness and helpfulness and desire then yeah, you, you can you can go places. Great. So for those those people uh, uh, wanting this advice, obviously yourself been involved with Belzona for, for twenty five years, which is you know uh, it's a, it's a fair amount of time to, to stay at one company, which is excellent. Yes. Um, yes. What what why Belzona? Why have you dedicated twenty five years to, to to Belzona? Okay. Yeah. Um, I it, I would say it's a combination of things. Um, and, and obviously they're all good things. So, yeah. so, so it's a number of good things all lining up together to to to, to make me think. Well, I, I don't I don't want to go anywhere else. There's, there's too <laughs> yeah. many good things here. So so good good things. Um, f- 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 I've already touched on it. R and D I think is well um, well thought of and well invested mm-hmm. in, in in Belzona. I think Belzona is fundamentally a technology business. Um, and, and I think a lot of that comes from from uh, Joel Svensson. I think he recognises that um, technology is at the heart of what Belzona has done in the past and what we continue to do, so the investment is there. And I think that, that is very important for anyone in an R&D position because you, you're not having a, a, a regular battle to get the resource you need. So that's the first thing. I would also say, and I've said this many times over the years, that the, the size of the business here we're an SME, small to medium size enterprise. The size of the the business is is probably in the sweet spot for R and D people, and the reason I say that is that we're not so big that you're a tiny cog in the R and D machine, so you only see one part of a product development. Yeah. So there are businesses out there where you know you've probably got one person to do one particular test. But that's all they do. They're, so they're just part of the, the product's evolution. Hmm. Um, we are big enough whereby we've got the access to the resources, we can do all the really good stuff, but the chemists can still own that project from start to finish. So if you like, it's it's about ownership, it's about bringing something new into the world. Um, and and with, with us being in the, in the sweet spot, we are the Goldilocks zone for kind of R&D, um, the chemist has so much control, so much um, influence over, over that project, and that gives the chemist obviously a, a great feeling of satisfaction rather yeah. than just being a, a little little cog in the machine. So I think that's important, that the size of the business for me personally uh, is, is ideal for, uh, for R&D. Um, and then of course there's the location, there's, there's the facilities. Yeah. Excellent uh, facilities. Yeah, as I say, when, when, I, when I rocked up in, in 1996 and saw the building for the first time, I was, in my mind, I was comparing that with what I'd come from in industrial Manchester. Uh, it was, it was, you know, a world, a world yeah. apart. It, it was 
it was modern, it was clean, it was attractive. Um, you know, the, the greenery in the area, greenery in the surrounding area, all of those things make me made me think, yeah, I, I could be very happy working here and, and living close by because it's a, a nice part of the world. It is, it's lovely. I, know. I can definitely attest to that having just bought my house in Harrogate. Ah, uh, yeah, so. well, 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 well done. <laughs> obviously, prices aren't, aren't cheap, so, so <laughs> we, must, we must be maybe paying you too much, Richard. That won't go in. <laughs> No, that's brilliant. Uh, exactly, yeah, I can't agree more. I, I think Harrogate's a, a, a great place to to, yeah. to live and work. The, the the last the last positive on 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 my list in terms of why I'm still here, yeah. is that I, I think Belzona has a great business model, um, and it's and it's about it's about Belzona uh, repairing and protecting, and the the value of that is uh, is that even in tough times, tough economic times. Um, Bell's owner tends to win, yeah. Because because customers want to extend the life of their assets, and if you've got a business that does well in tough times and does well in good times, well, that is the kind of business I want to work for. Because I I don't want to work for a, a business where it's you know boom and bust. Yeah. You know the the bust times can be hard, and the business I used to work for, um, you know, there were a couple of, of of tough times there. So I've been on the on the end of um, uh, reduced working. I think there was, there was there was short time working for a little while, yeah. and that's about the economic climate um, at Belzona. I think Belzona is somewhat insulated from those external factors, which is which is fantastic as an employee. Yeah. Great. What's your fondest memory from the past twenty five years? Okay, so I'd, I'd probably split split these up into kind of two two categories. I've got fond memories where. I've had success and I've, you know, achieved some kind of milestone yeah. because of course they stick in your mind as being, yeah, that was, that was a result for me. Uh, but there's also been, you know, the odd bit of fun and games. Um, so, so, so in terms of milestones, um, examples would be my first big presentation in a hotel in front of an audience of distributors. I think that was in Harrogate, um, and it was standing up in front of people and and giving the the, the product launch. Um, um, presentation, whatever my part was on the day, yeah. um, I think obviously terrifying when you, when, well, yeah. you, when you first do it. But um, afterwards, you know, great sense of satisfaction that that I was able to do that, and I think that also cemented my uh, desire to be kind of an expert. You know, to 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 be the person who people go to and say, "What's the answer?" Yeah, you know that's a really nice feeling when you're the expert and people come to you. It's a validation of of you knowing what you're talking about, you know, being needed and being able to help people. So you know, I, I you know, I took a lot a lot from that. I think that set me on a path of yeah, wanting to be wanting to be the expert. Yeah. Um, other other highlights: first trip to the states. Yes. So obviously we have uh, Bell's Owner Inc. Uh, in 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 Miami. Miami. Bell's uh-huh. Global as well now. Um, First trip to the States, again, quite quite a big deal for me, meeting lots of new faces, but um, I got great feedback from that. And whenever I've been to the States since, um, I've, I've always been really warmly welcomed. You know, you know, the, the, the US, Canadian, Latin American distributors, they, they've always been very welcoming um, yeah. and, and a lot of fun. You know, they, they like to go and have a beer after, <laughs> after the odd event. And, um, they, yeah, they do again, I can attest to that. It's, uh, yes. Nice bunch of people and, and very welcoming. So, so that's that's always been always been good. Um, and in terms of other highlights, obviously e- each product launch is a little mini highlight. Yeah. Um, but if I was going to pick one kind of product or one product launch or one event, yeah. Um, it's probably the the car lift stunt. I mean, and yes. that's, that's quite a, a big a big moment in um, in recent Bell's owner history. And I was kind of involved in that. Yeah. Um, where we suspended one Mercedes over another Mercedes, yeah. and and we bonded, we bonded the, the joint that held up the um, the car uh, suspended by the crane with one of my products. Now, now at that time, it w- it was not a brand new product; it was a slightly older product. Yeah. But that that was one of my, one of mine. So satisfaction there that it was my product, yeah. and great relief afterwards when it was all over. Yeah. Well, that that wasn't just some Mercedes, was it? That was. The owner's been saying, yeah, 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 I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of extra pressure there. Um, we certainly didn't want that to go wrong. Yeah, but fortunately, it did go well, and obviously, it was a nice piece of nice piece of media. 
Excellent, yeah. Uh, and for anyone listening who, who does, does want to check that out, we uh, what we'll do is we'll put a little link in the um, in the little bio because uh, because I believe that is actually on on YouTube, so yeah. you can all go and uh, and see that for yourself. But excellent. Okay, so to kind of kind of finish off, I'm I'm very interested to uh, to to find out in in your time that you've you've obviously been with the company. Um, how do you think the business has changed and, and developed? Okay, um, yeah, a lot. Obviously, twenty five years yeah. is, is not not a short period of time. Um, so just just thinking about R and D, R and D's grown massively. Uh, I think when I joined, there were three people in the R and D team at that time, including mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Uh, I think it, we were going through a rebuilding phase at that point, uh, and of course, at that point, there was also no. No Miami R and D. There's no US R and D team. So at that point, we had one team, three people, and I think we also only had one PC. We had one PC <laughs> for the entire department. Wow. Um, obviously now very different. I think I think we have seven, eight people in the yeah. UK. I think we're recruiting again uh, this year to 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 uh, increase that number. We have the Miami team who operate in parallel. So there's two R and D teams. Um, so yeah, it's a very different place in terms of R&D people uh, and of course infrastructure and 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 kit yeah so we, we've we've had the regular investment over the years um, from the shareholders and so you know our facilities are our, our test capability now is is completely different to, to, to what it used to be um, you know I, I think in the past uh, we, we had to kind of make do quite a lot yeah um, so we would run tests for instance I'm aware of tests being run using a pressure cooker. Right. So, so you know, this is early days of very early days of um, our high temperature materials. Um, but, but back then, there were no uh, there were no bespoke pressure cells. We didn't have access to those. Um, so, so I think that the, the initial prototypes were run using basically a, a domestic um, pressure cooker yeah. that was adapted for the purpose. Um, and but that then led us on to way more investment, way more uh, technical uh, test kit, and that's ultimately led to a suite of high temperature products. All the fifteen hundred series yeah. um, were all born from arguably, you know, a pressure cooker exercise <laughs> in R and D um, in in in, in Richard's uh, Richard Collett's time. So uh, yeah, lots of evolution in terms of R and D, um, and in terms of the rest of the business. Yeah, it's just it's been a similar picture, I think, really. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of big changes in terms of things like digital media. So when I joined the business, there was there was no digital media, no videos. No. It was all about celluloid photos and and kind of trying to categorise them and and print material. Now, of course, it's um, it's all digital media because you can do so much more with a video. Yeah. Um, or or a graphic, you know, an an interactive graphic that you can do with a piece of paper and of course you can reach the the world much more and much more effectively yeah um, and of course the size of the building and the turnover and all, all of those things have gone hand in hand with, uh, with with that kind of development okay okay now we have asked you what your fondest memory is at Belzona um, and you gave a, a very uh, excellent answer there um, 25 years of the business I'd like to know the funnest memories so you see the slight difference there. I do, I do. Okay, yeah, I, c- I can give you a, a couple of examples there um, because I think it is important that people enjoy work. Yeah, it's it's not just about doing the job. It's about you know having a having a good time uh, with with people you like. Um, so yeah, there've been there've been a few moments where where it's been less about work and more about that that kind of social side. Yeah. Um, one example that leaps to mind is the um, the two people into one boiler suit challenge. Right. Um, so uh, I, I didn't take part in that. We had a we had an inspector who who worked for the business for a while and then left. He, he was on the larger side. He, right. he had a fairly large set of overalls. We wondered one day whether we could get two people into them. And we could. So, so there we go. Well, I shan't mention the other the other person <laughs> right, okay. who, was in, who was in the suit, but they still work with the company for the company. Still here, right? Probably they are. Listening. They are. Um, I, I was also. I also remember being present at um, Jeremy Maillard's first encounter with homemade curry. Wow. Okay. That's and, uh, our export director. That's right. And, yeah. and at that point, uh, Jeremy was. Um, 
perhaps not so spice tolerant as he is these days. Right. Okay. Um, and and uh, there was there was a lot of sweating. But I, I think he's he's a bit more resistant these days. Um, and then the last one I'll, I'll give you, Richard, because it is my personal favourite. Um, it's um, I'd, I'd I'd call it. How would I describe it? We, we set up somebody, not we. I can't name any names. Somebody in the lab at one point set up a covert irrigation system on a lab bench and, and essentially what you, what you had was a little plastic pipe that ran from a tap and it ran under the edge of the bench and there were a few little holes popped into the pipe so that when you turn the tap whoever was stood at the bench would get uh, damp trousers and then would wander around <laughs> for the rest of the day with, with these damp trousers um, so I can't, I, can't recall what, I can't remember why we did it but it was very amusing wow. at the time I've, honestly, I've never heard any of these stories. I can imagine you were heavily involved in, in See, most that, of these. Well, that's that's the part that I, I can't comment on. <laughs> excellent. Okay, well, look, thank you so much for your time today. Um, really excellent insight. And, uh, and yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Richard. Great questions. And, uh, yes, it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. So Belzona has consistently invested in its people and, uh, and the business has expanded over the last few years. Recruiting has become a priority to, to help support this. So I'm here with uh, Tamara. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Belzona's latest new marketing assistant um, to talk about uh, your experiences with the company so far. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, hello, Tamara, and, and welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you very much. It's good to be here. It's uh, definitely an experience to be on a podcast and something, it's definitely my bucket list, actually. Really? So uh, there we go. It's uh, something. Yeah, oh, nice. Tick this off. Did you think when you started at Bellzone, uh, how long ago? Um, I started on the 17th of May. Ooh, so, so how long? So the listeners, how long ago would that have been in, that, in weeks? Let's say about eight weeks, nearly now. I think from what we're filming, from when we're filming now, uh, it's about eight weeks ago. Great. So eight months. eight weeks on, did you think you'd be in front of cameras and microphones in your no, face? No, I did not. I did hope, like, because when we talked about the episode earlier, I think it was June time. Um, we did mention about obviously like having more of a humanized brand yeah. and having people from Belzona talk on the podcast about their experiences of being there. And obviously I did sort of hope maybe, maybe they'll pick me. And then they did. <laughs> so Laura was like, yeah, you can do it. And I was like, great. And they've thrown so you here straight I am. in. Excellent. Yeah. So it's been a good experience and I'm looking forward to probably just share it on every social media platform I have. Yeah. <laughs> guys. Well, yeah. So no, uh, it's... yeah, it's something I'm very proud to be doing. So, uh, yeah. Well, we're very, very happy to have you here for uh, for a bit of a chat then. So you, you've obviously just heard uh, Jevon's interview before. So what yeah. we, you know what we're doing um, for, for this episode is to, to kind of kick off asking everybody to, to start with a bit of a, a random fact about themselves. So, and, and just again, to caveat, I have not heard this, so I'm, I'm very intrigued. Yeah, so uh, it's quite hard sometimes to be put on the spot with random facts about yourself, I find. Um, so it might not be technically about myself, but okay. I have met David Attenborough, and that's my random fact about myself. I say, hold on, how's that not about you? Well, that... it is about me, but like obviously it's to do with someone I've met. But I guess like it's not like, you know, Jevon's one that he put on there. Um... Do you know, well, no, no. Let's stick with with this, David. That is a massively interesting. David Attenborough is yeah. um... is a national treasure that I love very much, and I'm believing he's going to be an immortal and never going to die. Wow. Um, so, so yeah. How how did this come about then? It was oh, it's quite a generic story, really. So I lived like my hometown is in Northampton, um, and there's a city called Milton Keynes, which is about twenty minutes away, and they were doing a book signing for him in Waterstones, which yeah. sounds very, you know, old school and I think it was two thousand and nine this was. Oh, so okay. It was a long, long time ago and I was sixteen years old, you know, scared little me that had loved him since I was very, very young and my first um big documentary I watched of his was Blue Planet because yeah. I love marine life have done since I was very young and so yeah, when I um saw that he was doing a book signing, immediately jumped on it. Um, and my mum and I waited for three hours to see him. And it was a very small conversation, but I just told him how much I loved Blue Planet and how much he'd influenced me loving marine Aww. life. And he was just like, thank you very much, you know, with his little cute David smile and very bashful and very humble. And it was just something that has always stuck with me. And I've been very honored 
to have met him in my lifetime because a lot of people like, he's yeah. just a national treasure he's done so much for the environment and he's very very important to me yeah so yeah Excellent. that's it's been a very yeah it's been good good so I, I think for kind of reference especially for for british people i know we we have got some listeners uh, yes. uh further afield than, than than britain here um david attenborough is as as kind of the you know, national treasure of a list yeah. absolute a list um yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that is a good interesting fact. Sounds and I'm probably going to ask you more questions when we come back to the podcast. <laughs> That's fine. But I'm happy to talk to him on the phone all e- day. Excellent way Love to start him. start the, uh, the 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 interview. So, great. Okay. So, um we we've touched on the fact that you're uh, you you're a little bit new to the company, mm-hmm. which um again is why we're we're really keen to kind of uh, discuss that and 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 have, get your insight a little bit. Um but could you start just by telling us a little bit about your role uh, and, and kind of what you do? Yeah, so um Marketing is quite new to me, but my previous role had been in PR and social media, so they were sort of familiar. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of new things that I've been doing as soon as I started, actually, because um, I had one day of induction, yeah. which went very well, and then I got thrown into projects immediately. So the projects that we are doing are the 70th, so we're doing okay. a book for the distributors to send to their customers yeah. um, to show the applications which are from quite a while ago. I think some of them can be about 10, 20 years ago and then we revisited them and that's the main ones we want to include in the book. Um, and also I'm doing email marketing. I'm doing a lot of social media management, which is what I really enjoy doing. Yeah. So I'm managing the LinkedIn at the moment, which has been really interesting for me because I didn't really do a lot of LinkedIn with my previous roles. Yeah. This is quite new to me, but it's been really good talking to Yulia, who's a marketing director, and Laura, and learning a lot of, even from all the team, I've learned like, yeah. a lot in the last two months. So I'm doing like a varied amount of projects at the moment, but the favourite's probably didn't been with my social media management and yeah. also with the podcast, sort of going through there. So Great. Yeah, it's Be- been uh, a busy few months, two months. Um, it's It's been a lot, but it's been good. I've been thrown the deep end in a good way to sort of learn, and it's been a very good learning experience for me, so it's been really good. Great. So what, what what were your first impressions when, when you joined of, of Belzona? Um, I think my my dad my dad knew of them before I did. Okay. Knew of Belzona before I did. So um his company dealt with connectors and I think they were at the same sort of conference thing in Germany somewhere. Um he said they were a very good company and they were big and you know, they were good on manufacturing, they were always progressing what they were doing. So um obviously I wasn't really clued on to anything of what you guys were doing <laughs> so um it was very new to me as well but it was really great to uh because originally um i had a over obviously the skype interview rather yeah, than yeah. coming in but then i had a second interview and i came in and met with laura and i had a tour of the hot buildings both of them both of the buildings and yeah it was a really really good experience and seeing how everything worked and what you guys were doing and yeah. how it's all progressing so yeah it was a really good opportunity to see it firsthand and yeah just felt immediately comfortable when I started everyone was very welcoming and yeah it was just a really good experience so I had a very good first impression of the company so I've said when I first started and and you do get the kind of well not even the tour when I came for my pre-covid times the the interview at the site uh it's very very impressive kind of the the buildings especially across the road yeah Yeah. yeah, so yeah the newer one that's been built it was fantastic to look around it's um yeah, the factory is brilliant. It's and the big um, wind turbine that has all the marketing materials on it's quite impressive as well. And it was something that was like, oh okay, when <laughs> I first went. So yeah, it was a really good experience to go there. And yeah, it's been good ever since, really. Excellent. Yeah. So so how's the the training been? Obviously, the the initial stages of of, of you joining. How's that been for you? Um, the training. So originally what my other colleagues said when they first started the training was very sort of well the induction process obviously was like five days and yeah. it was spanned over five days but my obviously my one was only one day and then we're training as i said i've been sort of thrown into products very early on which i think was very beneficial to me to sort of really understand what the marketing team were doing and obviously yeah. what Belzona was about so it was very informative um so i had like a checklist and i used to look at webinars i would go and do tours i would talk to different people so yeah. i had a really interesting conversation with Jason Horn, who's R and D uh, manager, yeah. like that was really great to get them involved with that because I wasn't really, I'm not a very sciencey person. I like yeah. you know marine life and animals and stuff, but science isn't really my background as such. Yeah. So it was quite tricky to sort of 
learn or like the engineering it's, I'm, it's a learning process really yeah, like yeah, even yeah. for people now who've been continuous. here a few years it's, it's, conti- yeah, it's continuous like people are still learning engineering talk because we don't have an engineering background it can be a bit challenging but it is really interesting because I thought okay I'll see how it goes and like see what the content's like but then it's actually really interesting watching the webmasters is much better because I'm more of a visual and a kinesthetic learner like I'd like to learn by doing yeah and we also had um, a few of us had recently had a staff training seminar where we got to do applications, which is really interesting to sort of see what yeah, yeah. people do in the field and things like that. So it was really interesting to get, get involved with that. And yeah, the training has been really thorough, very good. Um, I'm never afraid to ask questions to people. No, um, everyone's very, very supportive in that sense. And it's been really good to sort of just get on with it, really, rather than sort of being... It's, yeah, as I said, it's been thrown in the deep end in a good way. Yeah. It's been sort of thrown into all these projects and getting involved with it and sort of, instead of just delaying it and just sort of tiptoeing and I've just been jumping into stuff, which has been really good for me. So that's how people, a lot of people learn. So it's been very informative. Great. Great. That's great to hear. Um, yeah, cool. So so when you were uh, looking for, for, for a new role and, and you touched on a little bit before about your, your dad obviously knowing about the company mm-hmm. previous, um, what what were you looking for? What was important for you um, when looking for a new company to join? I think the training, I think, was quite important to me um, because I wanted to get involved quite heavily with um, being quite into marketing. Um, more so how they impacted the environment, how um, they trained and developed their employees um just the culture i think was really important to me as well because i have been in big companies before and i used to work in london and it can just be very hit and miss sometimes with the people you get and i feel like everyone up north really friendly so i think (laughs) struck quite quite good with that really because being from midlands and then living down south and abroad like you it's, it's sort of a bit of a hit and miss with some places that you do work um Harrogate's lovely and the people it is very lovely yeah it's jevin touched on it in, in the previous interview it's uh uh, being located here, it was. I mean, for me as well, it was massive plus. It's uh, yeah, and people are lovely. So yeah, so um, I think it was just important to me to find a company that sort of had good training and development, good company culture. So it sounds a bit generic, really, but like it's what's important to me as a person, obviously. And then the company values and morals are very important as well. I think mm. more so now because of all the issues that have come up recently in the last few years. Um, people are looking at companies to see what their values and their goals are because they want them to be aligned. They don't want to work for a company that doesn't really care about some things or picks and choose and things like that. It's very com- you know, it's a complicated topic, but um, that was important to me. And mental health is a very big thing here, which I find really great. Um, one of the things I remember being told on my first day was that we had a helpline and that's, you know, um, very good if you're having problems or just if you just need to reach out to someone, I think just, making sure that the employee well-being is really great and it's not they're actually paying attention to it and doing more about it and I think that was very important to me as well so yeah I think that's that's it great yeah there's a <laughs> long, long list of things there it's Excellent. a long list of things I know but I think because I've worked in a few places as I said I've worked abroad and I've worked you know yeah just around the UK I think yeah. and in different industries and you know different dynamics it's like it's helped me figure out what i want from a company as well as what they want from me i think i'm 28 now like i've had a good employee history and i think it's just about figuring out what you want and what works for you and you have to do what's best for you at the end of the day so um i'm being very particular about it so yeah that's there's why. absolutely nothing Long wrong list with that. For that. nothing wrong with that so you, you touched on a couple of the uh, the things that you you've started to, to work on project wise mm-hmm. um what what's the most interesting what you know what have they got you doing which you know you're really enjoying and, and running with at the moment i think it's probably the social media yeah. management i think um i was sort of getting involved with it and then people were on holiday so i got to take over a bit more and now it's just i love planning content creating it like getting everyone involved and then just seeing the engagement and seeing how we improve. So all the metrics that we have on LinkedIn have improved now. Yeah. So like followers, we've now just passed 8,000 followers from this is July, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> could be 10, could be 10,000 by the time this comes out. Um, but it's just very important to me. I love seeing that sort of thing and I like managing stuff like that. And um, that's probably been my favorite so far. But then even email marketing actually, because I didn't really do so much of that in previous roles. So that's been very new to me. And then Hannah's been really great, like teaching me all the sort of, 
ways of doing that yeah. and so that, even just creating email campaigns and doing stuff and then yeah. yeah that's sort of what I've enjoyed most I think um but yeah social media manager, management's probably been my favorite so far excellent so um so it's kind of round things off um if you had to kind of pick one thing that that really stood out about to kind of describe why you like it here at Belzona what what would it be see I think one of my favorite parts about Belzona I think is that we have offices in different places like we have the US, China, Thailand, and obviously we have head office here, but yeah. it's so global. And that's something that my parents have both been involved with when they were working. They both worked for companies, I think it were German companies, but they were always, my mom and dad were always traveling around the world yeah. and meeting different people and seeing different things. I think that's very important to me as I've traveled a lot in my life anyway, but a big thing, I think, again, relating to the previous question you asked me was somewhere that is global that just has many different cultures and people as possible because like British people are nice I guess but <laughs> yeah, okay. I think it's nice having different cultures I just enjoy that it's something that I thrive in yeah and so I wanted to have that aspect and then just you learn from different people in that sense and yeah. I think that's what was important to me within a role as well so yeah I think the, definitely the global aspect of Balzona and just the opportunities that they have for that so that's a very very big thing great for me. Well, Tamara, look, thank you very much for uh, for your time. Thanks very and, much. Um, yeah. Uh, that about wraps us up for today's episode. Hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, or simply follow the podcast so you do not miss out on any of our future content. As always, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or your go-to podcast provider. Uh, for information on anything that we've discussed today, or information on any Belzona solution, application, uh, or service that we offer, uh, either directly or through the distribution network, please visit our website, which would be belzona.com. Um, like other episodes, um, little reminder that we would love to hear some feedback from you, uh, or alternatively, if you have any questions or suggestions on topics that you'd like us to cover, in future episodes you can now get in touch so we've set up a dedicated email address which is podcast at belzona.com so really looking forward to uh to hearing some feedback there um and thank you to all my guests that have been involved today uh, another really really good episode uh really interesting insights who knew jevin like lock picking uh and also tomorrow with david attenborough excellent um Thanks for everyone for, for listening and as always until next time, goodbye.